Shortly after Jesus left the children, Mark records this. And as he was setting out on his journey, a man ran up and knelt before him and asked him, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good except God alone. You know the commandments. Do not murder, do not commit adultery, do not steal, do not bear false witness, do not defraud, honor your father and mother. And he said to him, Teacher, all these I have kept from my youth. And Jesus, looking at him, loved him and said to him, You lack one thing. Go, sell all that you have and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. And come, follow me. Disheartened by the saying, he went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. Mark 10, 17 through 22. In the case of the rich young man, since prosperity was seen as proof of God's approval in ancient Israel, certain members of the religious community taught that rich people were the most likely candidates for the kingdom of God. Jesus just dismissed that notion. When the disciples heard this, they were greatly astonished and asked, who then can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, with man, this is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. Peter answered him, We have left everything to follow you. What then will be there for us? And Jesus said to them, Truly I tell you, at the renewal of all things, when the Son of Man sits on his glorious throne, you who have followed me will also sit on twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. And everyone who has left houses, or brothers, or sisters, or father, or mother, or wife, or children, or fields, for my sake, will receive a hundred times as much, and will inherit eternal life. But many who are first will be last, and many who are last will be first. Think about, uh, we have this place in our garage, in front of our garage, like where the wind circles all the time, and so there's always a pile of leaves there, and you have to trudge through it, right? And so, <clears throat> that's kind of what this is, but we also have that fr fall frenzy of winter's coming, right? And we're trying to get our crops in, we're trying to get our gardens cleaned out, and our flowers put to sleep, and do all those things, and so fall is a frenzy, and so today we are going to step aside and take an hour or so, a little less than an hour with any luck, um, to, to praise Jesus and worship God. And then we are going to go downstairs, and there is some fun stuff to do. Do not worry if you did not bring a can of vegetables, because we have a vat of soup down there, and we have sandwiches, and we have goodies. And so please join us. And we've got a couple things for you guys to work on in teams. We've got a nice prize for those who figure out how much candy corn is in the jar and um, we're just gonna and we're gonna get our treats ready for those who come to trunk or treat tonight so we've got a whole lot of things to do right after church and so please join us uh, for that but it is in the midst of the fall frenzy that we are in and so whether you're watching online or whether you're here in the midst of us in this place, we ask that everybody just take a big, deep breath all the way until you can't hold anymore and let it all out. And this time we're going to get rid of the frenzy, okay? In and out. Let's send ourselves with prayer. Please join me. Oh God, our God, sometimes we feel that you are hiding from us. Sometimes we feel that you demand too much. Sometimes we feel challenged beyond endurance. In this time of worship, may we hear not only, but also words of comfort and words of challenge and promise. May we see that Jesus understands our needs and that we are what we are going through. And in this seeing, May we find hope in grace in times of need. 
Amen. As you are able, please rise and join together in our call to worship. Let us start this service well by reminding ourselves that it is not we who chose Christ. That we are not here because of our goodness. That we are not here to enlighten ourselves. That we are, have not come to be entertained. Amen. Now please join together in singing, Oh Jesus, I have promised. may be seated. When you swear you brought your Bible out and set it here, and it is nowhere to be seen. So my desk is holding on to that so I don't lose it. And we are going to turn to Matthew 19. Matthew 19, and we're going to start at verse 16 and go through 30. Once a man came to Jesus. Teacher, he asked, what good thing must I do to receive eternal life? Why do you ask me concerning what is good, answered Jesus? There is only one who is good. Keep the commandments if you want to enter life. What commandments, he asked. Jesus answered, do not commit murder, do not commit adultery, do not steal, do not accuse anyone falsely, respect your father and your mother, and love your neighbor as yourself. 
I have obeyed all these commandments, the young man replied. What else do I need to do? Jesus said to him, if you want to be perfect, go and sell all that you have and give the money to the poor and you will have riches in heaven. Then come and follow me. When the young man heard this, he went away sad because he was very rich. Jesus then said to his disciples, I assure you, it will be very hard for rich people to enter the kingdom of heaven. I repeat, it is much harder for a rich person to enter the kingdom of God than for a camel to go through the eye of a needle. When the disciples heard this, they were completely amazed. Who then can be saved, they asked. Jesus looked straight at them and answered, this is impossible for human beings, but for God, everything is possible. Then Peter spoke up, look, he said, we have left everything and followed you. What will we have? Jesus said to them, you can be sure that when the Son of Man sits in his glorious throne in the new age, then you 12 followers of mine will also sit on thrones to rule the 12 tribes of Israel. And everyone who has left houses or brothers and sisters or father or mother or children or fields for my sake will receive a hundred times more and will be given eternal life. But many who now are first will be last and many who are now last will be first. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Please rise. seated and our young folks can come up for front porch time for our time children's time everybody is welcome up here we have <gasps> look at all these costumes look at you guys are you a farmer cool oh my goodness girl after my own heart I didn't quite dress like that but close all right, guys, it is good to have you here this morning. And what exciting things do you have planned for the next day or two? School! School! School. Is that exciting? No! We've got some yeses and we got some noes, but it is kind of, isn't it? Sometimes, yeah. And, and what do you get to do? I mean, maybe this afternoon, maybe this afternoon down here on Main Street or tomorrow night or whenever you go do your thing, what do you get to do? You have a little basket. What do you do with the basket? You get candy, because what's it called? Trick or treating, that's right. Do you know what we're going to talk about today? We're going to talk about giving and receiving. So think, give or receive and receive, trick or treat, right? It can kind of run hand in hand, because sometimes when we decide that we're going to give something to somebody, we feel like we've been tricked, right? Sometimes we do, because we're like, they're not as careful with that as I would be. Like, what if you loan your bike to your neighbor, and he takes the jump, and he bends your wheel? Are you going to be upset? Yeah. Feels a little bit like a trick, right? But... What about the treat, or what about when we receive something, like our friend has a new bike and they let us drive that. Isn't that cool? They let us take the jump with their bike? Yeah, so see, there's good and there's bad in that, right? Sometimes we give and everything goes great, and sometimes we give and things don't go quite the way we want to. And it's the same thing when we receive things. Sometimes folks think, well, that didn't go like I planned when they give us something, but, they give with what we call open hands. So everybody go like this. Can you do this? Now, if I give you something, can you take it if I have it on my hand like this? Mm-hmm. 
but what if I'm going like this? Can you take it out of my hand? No. no. So if we're giving folks stuff, we want them to just be able to have it, right? So we want to make sure, and this is kind of just a visual, but we do want people to always be able to just have things when we give it away open-handed, right? When we just let people have those things. Because if we decide to give things, we really don't have strings attached, right? When Jesus gives us things like love and he says, it's okay, you, you tried, is he taking things or giving things? Giving things, right? He's saying, I'm giving you my love even if you didn't do exactly what I wanted. And so what if we decide that, um, that we want to try harder to be like Jesus wants us to be? Then we're giving, right? But we're also still receiving in the meantime. We're also still getting something for that. Um, we get that whether we're on our best behavior or not, but we have to accept it. So how do you accept something? If you receive something, you can put it in your hands, but how do you accept it? You bring it closer, right? You like, okay, thank you, thank you, you know? And so we accept Christ's love. And so that's amazing that we have that opportunity. The other thing that's amazing is that God makes it possible for us to do great things when we do them together, right? Because we're better together. Say that together. Better together, right? And so we can do a whole lot more than we can if we try to do things by ourselves. We do things better when we have support and when we have each other to, to um, help us when we do things. One of those things is our noisy offering, right? So before we even start, I just want you guys to give these guys out here a hand. Yay! So our goal was 50 blankets. Now we didn't double it, but we did 75 blankets. Now give them a big round of applause. Yay! So we will send that money in when we send our in-gathering stuff. We will send that, uh, that money in, and, um, and they will be able to buy blankets with that. And so that will go next week, and we'll make sure that there are folks all over, not only right here, but all over the world who are able to be warm if there's a crisis, right? So it's amazing. You know what we are going to do today? We're doing something special because they did so good the rest of the month. This is a fifth Sunday, right? So it's something special. Here's what we're going to do. There's this thing called UMCOR, United Methodist Committee on Relief. And it takes care of folks when there's a big storm, when there's did you see the big storm that went through Florida and it like knocked boats out of the water and all that kind of stuff? Yeah. What about the forest fires over on the, like through Colorado and Utah and all over California? There's a lot of folks who lose things, right? Maybe they lose their whole house and they need some place to stay. They need clothes. They need water. So UMCOR helps them with that. The great thing is Oakland United Methodist pays what we call apportionments every year, and that takes care of all the administrative costs. So that means there's, we don't spend anything to pay somebody to take the money, right? Everything that we give this morning is going to go straight to the people that need it. The other thing is this afternoon at Trunk or Treat, there's going to be a chance to give even more with a hot dog meal. So everything has been do donated for a hot dog meal, and you get a chance to make a free will donation instead of just paying for your meal, and that gets to go to UMCOR as well. So there's so many chances to give for that for a very good cause. So let's grab our buckets, and this morning we're gonna collect for UMCOR, and it's just for one Sunday, it's because it's a special Sunday. Hey Henry, you gonna grab a bucket? Okay, gotta go get some money. Can you, oh, yep, perfect place for that to go. Well, that was nice. Can you say thank you for the bucket? Look, he brought you a bucket. Good job. Okay. Now you can go get, go get some money. Remember, it doesn't have to be noisy. It can crackle like paper, too. It's fine. We take all kinds. We're not choosy. Don't 
don't forget the back rows, guys. And don't forget media. I think. Are you going to hold this when we get it full? Do you want to hold this bucket when we get it full? Okay, put your bucket away. <gasps> Good job, Des. Oh, Jasper. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, I'm, I'm shedding. Yeah, that's, that's good, just like the leaves. Uh-oh, there's a penny back there. Can you grab that penny? Okay. You guys are good workers. Can you see that? Can you put your bucket away? Thank you. Can you dump it in there? Thank you. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Well, you've got so much it doesn't even want to come out. There you go. Okay, put your bucket away. <gasps> One more. Okay. There we go. Okay, let's come down here so we can, we're going to pray down here, okay? Can you hold that for me? There you go. Okay, let's circle him. You ready? Repeat after me. Dear God, we hope that our love can be seen through these gifts for people who have lost so much. Multiply it with your love. And all God's people said, amen. Awesome. Now, everybody, Jasper, can you pull that out for folks? And everybody can get one of those, and then let me get your special treat for dressing up. It's good to know, isn't it? Jasper, don't forget, bud. Okay, then you come over here and get your special treat. There you go. Oh, that's, that's Henry's, isn't it? Oh, Henry, do you have enough hands here, bud? There's that. Can you carry that back for him? Okay. Could you get your special treat? Here you go. There you go. Okay. There you go. Okay, now we have a couple other people out here who need a blessed because they were brave. He's a human. Dad was not brave. <laughs> okay, it is time for our joys and concerns, our prayers. We are going to start off with uh, the family of Shirley Adams, who passed away earlier this week. Um, she will have a graveside um, on Tuesday at 2, so you can find those details on Recon's site. Um, and there is a short visitation before, so um, that is there. Had a report on Josiah. His, his liver is doing well and, and seems to be accepting that. The things that are happening are over and beyond that. So um, they're just things his body probably adjusting, but we want to keep those prayers up because when you are a transplant patient, even the smallest things can really mess with you. So let's continue to keep him in prayer for continued healing. We want to also keep all our Halloween fun in prayer, uh, whether it's the trunk or treat here or up at the golf course or whether it's trick or treating or whatever it is, that our young folks and not so young folks can all be safe and that we are all attentive to what's going on around us. And our church to pray for this week is Silver Creek, um, outside of Hancock. And so we are praying for them. They are both 
part of our, um, our, they are an RCA church now, and they also are part of our circuit. So we just are doubly blessed to be able to be in relationship with them. So keep Silver Creek in prayer this week. Um, let's see, I see Landon was cancer free, so praise offering to God for that. But we'll keep, again, he's, you know, just like everybody else, he's, he's struggling with, with the effects of the, the drugs to kill the cancer and all those kind of things. So um, just continue to keep Landon and his family in prayer. Are there others? Yes, Eric. A joy is that Carol Wilson had a birthday this oh, week. Oh, yes, I remember that. Happy birthday, Carol. Doesn't look a day over 23. Yeah. <laughs> Others, birthdays, anniversaries. Okay. Oh, the volleyball girls. Yes, thank you. Um, let's pray for the volleyball girls. For uh, is their game? Do they know when's the first game? Tuesday, Tuesday at six. So let's pray for them. Um, and safe passage to Des Moines and in all that goes along with that um, going to state is crazy so uh, safe passage and uh, congratulations on using their skills that God gave them right and honing those and using it uh, for the good of our community to just give us something to have joy about right uh, Kyler Keaton and Eric had their first uh, quiz bowl competition yesterday in Ankeny and uh, Kyler they had an A team and a B team Kyler was on the team that came in first yes the A team <laughs> um, Kyler our Keaton and Eric were on the B team that came in fourth and Eric finished in the top 20 individual scores awesome good good work guys Good job. We're switching seasons here, guys. We're going from outdoor to indoor stuff. So, okay, we had good results at state too for cross country, so that was good. Okay, if that is all, then let us go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, in this frenzy of fall, remind us that. Um, you reside with us, that you walk with us, that you are closer than our very breath as we go about our days, above our preparations for the change of season and our preparations for the joys of the season, the, the sports and the other events, the um, educational events, and, and just those wonderful things that provide music and entertainment for each of us. Lord, we ask that your hand might be upon each and every one as we go forth to have fun today, that uh, you might remind us that joy comes from you, just as, as uh, your care takes care of us in other situations, it also takes care of us in joy, and help us to dwell in that care, that we may receive it, that we may accept it, and that we may um, reflect that to this world around us that sometimes has a hard time finding joy. Let them find their joy in you, Lord. Let them find the missing parts that come uh, together in a life with you. We thank you for um, the ways that you heal us in so many ways, whether it's mind, body, or spirit, the way that you work in and through us with healing power. Might um, you find that we are appreciative Lord, we thank you for your support when we grieve, when we reach out to others, let them embrace us in a reflection of your love. All this we bring before you in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, and in the name of um, the one who brought him to us, we offer this prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And I do want to remember Fred in our prayers as he continues uh, to heal from his uh, procedure that he had earlier this week. Keep that in mind as well. So we are, our, our title of our message is All That You Have. And I want you to take just a moment to consider all that it ha you have in this world. We have not just material things, right? We have love, we have joy, we have grief. But yes, we do have things like homes and vehicles and, and great love for each other and, and all those things that are a part of making us us, right? And in this um, scripture that we hear this morning, Jesus tells this rich young man, give it all, give it all away and follow me. And the young man is sad, not because he's poor, right? He's sad because he's very rich. He is rich in things, but it never says that he is rich in relationship, in love, in the things that we would say if we lost all else, if I could still have love, if I could still have joy, if I could still have those things that really aren't tangible and sometimes depend upon our thought process, right? I mean, things that create joy in me will not necessarily create joy in you. I love to sit down and read a book like all day long. You know what my husband is doing that whole time? Are you still reading? Yeah, what, what if we go do this? And what if we go do, do, do you think, he's just not one to just set, you know? And I'm really not either, but if you give me a good book, I set for a long time. Because it brings me joy, right? He loves going off to a concert every once in a while. And lately, right now, getting ready for Christmas, there's lots of practices. There's lots of concerts coming up. And... I'm like, are you going to be home this week? No, 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 not going to be home this week. You know, that brings him great joy. But yet, at the same time, he's gone every Tuesday and Thursday night at practice for concerts, and I'm gone every Tuesday and Thursday night to Grist Mill for practice. So we both have different things that bring us joy, right? But we share we share when we can share our joy, and we separate when we can't. So we all might not have the same idea of what it is to give up everything. His life would change monumentally if he gave up music. Mine, not so much. I love it, but, you know. But ask me to give up my books, and I'd be sad. So Jesus is asking him to give up everything. And what brings this man joy 
his physical things, right? The grain he has kept, the houses he's built, the people under his power, the money that he has. And Jesus says, give it all away. Um, so giving and receiving is really what we're talking about, right? Giving and receiving, and, and it is a spiritual practice. There is a spiritual practice that can be part of our giving and receiving. So a lot of times I talk about, uh, several times a year probably, it's not what we do, it's the intent behind what we do, right? So we can do everything that a secular entity can do, but if we're doing it with the love of Jesus, it changes the intent of doing that thing, right? It changes why we are doing the thing. And so um, I want, so learning to receive though, we're, we can give sometimes, right? Sometimes we're hesitant because we're not real sure. But like we talked about with the kids, we give, but we have to give open-handed. We have to give without the strings attached, just like Christ gives to us. But I want to talk to you about the receiving today and the way that we receive things and the spiritual practice of that. So uh, you remember, so uh, Frederick and uh, Marianne Broussat have actually teach classes on the spirituality of giving, okay? And they, they um, talk about how we make it a practice to not only give, but to receive. And then both are equally important. And they say many years ago, one of the main characters in Chicago Hope, now some of you are too young to remember that show, but um, had a near-death experience during surgery. While he was recovering, he confided in a friend that he had learned the secret of life. It was giving and receiving. Giving and receiving. In a film from 1993, Kathy Bates was a mom of five or six kids. It was called A Home of Our Own. And... Um, after leaving California, they settle in this shack in the hills of Idaho, right? And instead of paying rent, because they didn't have any money, they did chores for their landlord. And so she works at a bowling alley as a waitress, and uh, the Catholic priest comes in quite a bit, and so he's seeing that she has need, and he keeps offering her things. He offers her food, he offers her clothes for the kids, you know, because they are just not quite making it. And what does she say? No, right? She has not been able to, to, um, to learn to receive. So our reluctance to receive affects our relationships. It affect, we offend people when we can't receive. And there's a difference between just receiving, like just saying, oh yeah, thanks, and actually accepting. So we receive God's grace, correct? We receive that, but how many times do we accept it? How many times is it that we find that we cannot, for the life of us, receive and accept well? So the spiritual practice of that, how do we, how do we get better at that? Because when we don't receive or ac and accept something that someone gives us or something someone does for us, what does it do? It negates the gift that God gave those folks that are giving to us. It says, you know, what God gave you isn't important. The gift that God gave you isn't important. And for you to share that with me, eh, what happens when your small child, whether it's a, it could be a student, it could be a grandchild, it can be a niece or nephew, any child around you brings you that dandelion. What do we do with it? Do we take it and say, oh, thanks, it's just going to die, and pop it in the trash right there? No. We treat it like it's the most valuable thing that we have ever received as a gift in our whole life, right? We treasure it. Now it might go in the garbage later, but in the midst of that moment, we treasure that, right? 
We might get a glass of water and stick it in there. We might, they might come back then with a violet or some, or a flower they're not supposed to pick, you know, but we put all these things into this vase and, or this little glass of water and we value it and we show them the value of their gift. What if we treated everyone that gave us anything, whether it is love, whether it's grace, whether it's mercy, whether it's financial, whether it's an object, no matter what we received, what if we did that with that same love, with that same care, with the same excitement? Now, think about the Christmas sweater you really didn't want, you know, and you're like, oh, thank you. But you got the weird face on, right? And they know you're really not happy with it. What if instead it's like, thank you. Thank you for thinking of me enough for that gift, you know, that you would go out and look for that gift just for me. Again, our joy comes from different places. We have different ideas of what looks right and what's in style and all of these things. But how we receive the gift. So as the church, what does that look like? As a body, as a congregation, as a faith family, as the folks who gather together to praise Jesus and worship God, we receive that love, right? We receive that grace. Do we receive it from each other the same way? And then do we accept it? I know if you were around in August when I came back from my spiritual renewal, and I said, and, and my spiritual director said, Kim, you know God has all this for you, but you're not accepting it, right? So God's going to take care of you, but you have to let him. So as the church, as the church, the people, remember, we're not talking about the building, the big C, the church, the people, as the church, how do we let folks in our lives know that their gift is just as precious as that dandelion that is just as precious as the grace we receive from god is just as precious to us as the way that we can it just as precious to us so that we can accept it so that we let it become part of us that is what lets them know how valuable they are and their gift to us is. Whether that is time, whether that is treasure, whether that is talent, whatever it is, it is precious to God, it is precious to us. Let us reflect that love and that caring for each other. And the way we do that is to come together in joy, to come together in love, to build relationship with each other and to build relationship with others. So how are we going about our weeks? Think about that for a little bit. Maybe not giving away everything like Jesus has asked the, the rich young man to do, right? But giving away pieces of ourselves that reflect Christ to the world. How are we doing that? Think about that. That's your challenge this week, is to wonder how we do this well together. Let us pray. Lord, we praise and thank you for all that you have given us, and we thank you for the way that you wrap us, that you just wrap us in love and grace and mercy and strength and power and things that we cannot imagine, and we know that that gift is beyond all measure. That there is no dollar amount, there is no thing that we can own that equals what you have gifted us with. But it's hard, Lord. It's hard to give up the things that we see as valuable in this life. In the yearning of the things that you see as valuable. Be with us, guide us, lift us up, and move with us through the days that we are hearing your voice clearly as we give and receive and accept all with open hands raised to your glory. All this we pray in your holy name.
Amen. And now we will receive our tithes and our offerings. Please rise. Join me in the prayer of thanksgiving. Great God of heaven and earth, you call us to leave behind our preoccupations and to follow you into the future. Sometimes we find your call challenging. We are comfortable, maybe even complacent in our present. May this act of giving be a gesture of our willingness to follow where you lead. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's continue with our final hymn, um, The Gift of Love. Please remember to join us downstairs. Um, I think we have plenty to go around and we would love to have everybody join us for our activities as well. Um, when you get down there, if you will sit in the tables closest to the stage, uh, they have some papers on them, then I will let you know what comes next. So um, I will be down there as soon as I can. 
In, so as we conclude this portion of our day, let us join together in our benediction. We go forth both to give and receive. May we not stop with finances. May we both give and receive love, grace, mercy, joy, gifts, and relationship. May it all be given and received in your holy and beloved name. Amen. And now, our sending forth. I thought that didn't sound right, and I was like, well, there we go, thank you. 